Welcome to the Banorte Grand Prix here on the, the weekend of the Global Champions Tour in Mexico. This is the second day of competition. This is the, the Mini Grand Prix. Norris won the back end of last year, won a class in, in Olympia. Daniel, who also came just back from Sotoko Bosch, where he had a, a very, very good show. Still clear. Yes. This being our eight clear, so one also for Germany. But very much in form, Daniel. This would be definitely a very fast horse for the jump off. So Daniel joins the seven others. So we have. Matilda Carson, Alberto Zorsi, Peter Fredrickson, Niels Brandsils, Bizi Madden, Emil Halunbeck, Jerome Gary, and Daniel. Being our eight clears. Just nine horses left to go. First of them is Henrik von Neckermann. Henrik riding Kip Bueno de Huss Z. Second in the class in Doha. This one previously asked for it by Jerome Gary. Standard uh, final in uh, Gutberg might not have delivered all he had hoped, but now very nice clear, and it's just nine clears with two Swedes in the jump off. strong uh, team of riders from Sweden here in Mexico with Evelina Tovek. Marlene Bayard, Peter Fredrickson and Henrik. All competing here. So next is Olivier Philippard, and he 
he's riding Katalaya. Katalaya was, until not so long ago, written by his brother Thibaut. The third show that uh, Olivier is riding. Katalaya, 10 year old mare by Catches. 101 feet 50 class at the Sower Mare Show. First part of the double down. Jumped uh, the plank there extremely well. Already second in the good class here this week. And uh, Don Vito, previously written by Sergio Moya. And uh, one class in London GCT. Chelsea last year. Ben. Ben who has had a, a tremendous uh, season there with his uh, main horse explosion. The answer written by Sergio Moya is uh, an Emperor Gelding by Capri Z. Out of a Canto Mare. Sorry. It's, gel it's a Gelding by Caprice out of a Jus de Pomme Mare. Still clear. Just could be our 10 clear. No, unfortunately, the last fence down. And not the first one to have the last fence down. So still the nine clear. With next into the ring is uh, Eduardo Alvarez Aznar. of the Madrid in Motion team has had a tremendous last 12 months or more unfortunately here yeah, first went down but uh, mentioned Eduardo won already a class here this week and was in the lead for the very last day of the 
World Cup final in Gothenburg last week with Rockefeller. Uh, Eduardo, who on money won in the last year, will be in the fourth place just after Steve Gerda having won 1.5 million in prize money over the last 365 days. Just a little higher as uh, Daniel Doiser. Here he's riding uh, Equal in the Chaussee. Just a four falls, a very fast uh, four falls uh, at the moment, laying uh, in the 11th place. Lopez and uh, Carlos is riding GNC Ariane. GNC Ariane, very successful horse with uh, Sergio Ma Moya. already won a class here at the Mexico show. And, uh, despite maybe not having been quite as successful with this horse as one would have hoped, he still has a lot of places, placings in top competition. with a tremendous jump difficult can sometimes be difficult to, to get to come back but all the ability and extremely careful so clear touch in the middle but it's leaves on and I think this just could be our pen clear yes it is in the time in the clear round for Carlos and Ariane which we would be tremendously happy about so just three to go First of the three is for Holland, Gergo Schrader, with his 16-year-old Glocks Cognac Chamblanc. And a clear way out of Caratino Mare. This horse was second in the Grand Prix in Maastricht. careful horse makes a, a beautiful shape over, over the fence Oops. Yeah. 
Crossroads. For Belgium, Peter de Vos, and Peter is riding Claire Z. Claire Z uh, on the Nations Cup team for Belgium at the Barcelona Nations Cup finals. And, uh, third in the Grand Prix in Berlin. Just an 11 year old by Clearway, the same sire as the previous horse. Was placed yesterday, Peter, who also competed in Gothenburg, the World Cup final. Unfortunately, apart uh, atypically, uh, got into trouble the triple bar, which uh, spoiled things for for Peter. Peter has a big, big team of horses, and both consistent and competitive all the time. This mare actually two years ago won the Grand Prix during the Barcelona Nations Cup final. And it was the beginning of her acting at the highest level. Jumping very well there. And coming in on the clear round. And probably the third Belgian rider. And the 11th. for this jump off. So, this was the last horse to go. Edwin Atops uh, was then to be decided not to partake. So, with 11 horses to go into the jump off. Jump off over a, a short course. And the 11 riders is Matilde Carson. Riding her nine year old Chopin, Alberto Zorsi, Danique, Peter Fredrickson, Sacramento, Niels Brunzel, Zutamaro, Bismad Coach, Emil, Hallenbeck, Lucino, Jerome Geary, Kellam Deus, and Daniel Deus on Cornet. Henrik van Eckerman, Carlos Lopez, Ariane, and Peter de Vos riding Claire Z. The jump off is over fences three, four, and six with a tight turn possible to six, then from six, a new fence is being introduced, fifteen. Twelve B and C. That's the two, the second and the third part of the combination. Thirteen, which was the last fence of the previous round, and then a gallop down to a vertical of uh, Barnorte. So it's going to take a horse that, with a lot of balance, to be able to gallop down to a vertical 
made out of white poles. So a big, a big challenge. Ahead, 146,000 euro to be won in this Banorte Grand Prix. Part of the Mexico Global Champions Tour event, which is held here in Mexico on the Campo Marte this weekend. Now, with our first uh, competitor in the ring, and the uh, first in the ring is uh, Matilda Carlson. Uh, Matilda riding her Chopin, tremendous stallion, nine year old by Casal. Uh, great achievement by Matilda to have brought on the horse and now to be competed at the very highest level and then with a chance to win her first five-star Grand Prix. So we'll discover the, the course with her. As mentioned, it's the big arena. It's a track which will demand all the skills in the one horse. Uh, one sharp turn back to a vertical and there is an awkward ankle angle in which to come to a double of verticals which were the last two parts of the triple combination and then a very long line to finish on a vertical so First, starting with number fence number three of the, the first round, which is a vertical. Beautiful. Down to the oxer. Tremendous jump. Probably one of the nicest young horses on the circuit. Yeah, great jump over that. Cross to the now left hand turn. A gallop to the, the double of vertical which comes slightly awkward angle. Great jump in, great jump out. Now um, let's try and turn fast back to the oxer. Scoop to the oxer and galloping down to the last. The public encouraging and she's leaving up and clear and Matilda obviously delighted over this tremendous performance. Great achievement by this young horse by Casal and produced by Matilde Carlson riding for Sri Lanka. So the target of 44 51. Definitely not an impossible target to improve, but at the same time, she left them all up and she didn't waste any time. Horses both careful, scopy, and turns very easy. A very, very nice horse. So next into the ring is Alberto Zorsi, and uh, he is riding Danik. Alberto, of course, part of the top stables and uh, a rider well used to go against the clock and very fast but again he has to leave them up there's uh, a lot of verticals to be jumped so 
here, deciding to take it from a, a different leg, turning. First. GNP vertical is landing there at 14. And jumping into the double. Norris misjudged again. Could have been the shadows. And it has to be rebuilt. Might be able to see this back on the replay. So the clock is stopped now while they're rebuilding the fence. And he has the clock start and be starting again when he jumps the fence. So unfortunately for Roberto, part of the combination down as well, so he's coming in on eight faults and with a one-time fault added as well, making a total of nine in 52.87. Now we might see here what happened. Oh, it's just put down again. It's slightly long, but not an impossible, but the horse just put down again and uh, you had to put him out of the second part. So Next in next next in the ring is uh, for Sweden Peter Friesen riding a relatively new mount for him. It's the third show where Peter is riding this horse, uh, Sacramento, previously ridden by Douglas Lindelö, who won the World Cup in uh, Oslo back in the last year, so he's also coming right-handed, slightly more conventional than what uh, Zorsi did. Continuing to gallop there. Landing on the same time as Zorsi. And 20 landing there and then taking off here at 26. So now turning back to, to the Longines Oxer and the really gallop down to the and clear over the Barnorte and coming in at 41.89 and taking the lead now Peter Fredrickson. That looks like a much more difficult time to, to beat. Um, Do not believe there was many plays had a great line down to the last vertical. Could maybe turn a little bit tighter after Banorte, but looks a very fast time. So next now into the ring is somebody that definitely will try and beat the time. This is uh, Niels Brownsales and uh, Niels is riding uh, Utamaro de Cousin. The horse well able to speed and well used to the winning as well. Joe Klee and William Whitaker, his two previous riders. So he as well decided to turn the left. The clocks are at a slight angle and fence is closer. 
from that approach, which is why they decide. Landing again about the same, 14 and a half. Yes, and clear. And coming down, 39, 40, 40, 41. No. Nearly one full second slower. Things looking very good for Peter there on the 41.89 because except for the fact that this horse is maybe a short stride, otherwise it didn't look like he, he left too much there. But next is Busy Madden, and Busy Madden is riding coach. Talent and the form of uh, Peter Fredrickson can never be highlighted enough. Quite amazing to look at the percentage of horses placed and winning, uh, written by Peter Fredrickson, and also the variety of horses that he's able to ride to success at the highest level. Take this horse that had been very successful for a long time with uh, Douglas, who rides differently to him, and then to just adapt himself to the horse and be now in, in the lead in this five-star Grand Prix. Quite tremendous. So, it's busy. She was fast there. Going a little bit wide to assure the vertical. little bit behind uh, Peter, I would say, at that stage. Nice to get back. Very clean over this. Tighter to this oxer. So just tighter to the oxer, coming down to the last fence. I think she could be up. She could be up. No. Yes. Yes, a faster time and into the lead, into the lead. Forty-one forty-seven. A full forty-two seconds. Forty hundred of a second uh, faster than uh, Peter. Probably if one had the luxury of a head-on or a head-to-head. -head. I would say that she she won it on the way that she turned after the double of verticals back to the last line. Next time for Denmark. in Handelbeck and he's riding Lucino. Jumped a, an extremely impressive first round and he also is going for the Left turn. An opportunity for Emil to put his name in big letters. Same as B's to assure the vertical.
a little wider than, or a good bit wider than the BZ to this boxer. Going down to the last, being a little bit careful, and 42, 54. Going into fourth place, just behind Niels uh, Brunzel. So we just five combinations to go. In the lead is uh, Busy Man on 41-47 with Peter Fredriksson on 41-89. Jerome, recent winner of Grand Prix in uh, Vejer, will definitely not be hanging about the horse slightly slower cantering horse than, uh, than the others but Jerome is extremely competitive so Jerome riding Caleb Deus year old stallion by Kidam de Ravel and he as well oh, he's doing something a little bit strange here because he's, he's turning left but he's, he's actually going on the right hand side so anyway he's off Um, he actually is bang on time there. He's bang on time. It all depends how well he can turn after the after the double, and he's turning tight. Turning tight and taking a chance on the vertical and leaving it up. Forty-one. 9-5 just beside Peter Fredriksson going into third place. So at the moment we have Busy Madden, Peter Fredriksson and Jerome Geary all within a second 41-47, 41-89 and 41-95. So it seems to be very difficult to get below the 41 seconds. Next to Trite, uh, no better man. This is a, a handy, quick horse, previously written by Lauren Hogg. This is Cornet, son of Cornet Oblitsky, written by Daniel Doiser. for the Stepic Stables. One class at Olympia in December. And a tremendous show with Tobago Z. Gothenburg. Now, I need to turn very sharp to this vertical. Yes, had a bit of luck. Was quick to the to the oxer. Yes, quick there. Didn't lose much time in the air, and very quick back to this oxer. And fast, he's, he's, he's on, he's just, no, unfortunately, he did assure, he had the time done, he was 39, 37, had the time done, but unfortunately, the back rail, so the time can be done, and just three to go. Henrik von Eckermann, Carlos Lopez, and 
Peter de Vos. First of the three is uh, Henrik van Eckerman. is riding Kevin de, de Hus, just a nine-year-old. Nine-year-old, which is also the age of uh, Chopin, the horse of Matilde Carlson. is in sixth place, having jumped a tremendous clear round. fast I don't think as uh, Daniel Doiser oh. yes. coming down to this last fence leaving it up and 42.15 which puts him into fourth place just pipping Niels Brunsdale just two left to go of this Grand Prix Benorte, a small Grand Prix in the context of the Global Champions Tour second leg in Mexico. And the most exciting class it is with just two to go. And first of the two is uh, Carlos Lopez with Ariane. Good few Grand Prix with Sergio Moya in his time, and uh, Carlos will be very keen to do the same here this evening. The sun has now disappeared behind the stand so it's a lot cooler than what it has been and no more shadows on the on the ground very fast from one to two it's bound to turn short there more or less on par with everybody on that one he was quick to the oxer There, turn sharp or slow down a bit. And now coming down to the last. Unfortunately, didn't quite go according to plan. The horse got confused, didn't take off. So, unfortunately, four faults for uh, There's uh, take a little bit of confusion. Yeah, no, they have given him four faults. Um, so, with four faults in uh, 42.15, uh, unfortunately, put uh, Carlos into the ninth place. Now, only one left 
that could do it. And he will definitely try to do it. Not uh, nim most nimble of horses, big jumper. Of course, has, has won Grand Prix before. Beasy and uh, Peter are assured of a podium placing. So, last to go, Peter De Vos riding Claire Zed. Needing to go clear and faster than 41.47. But same as everybody up to there. It's a good turn, very good turn, and now definitely going to be brave and leaving it and coming in and and yes, taking it tremendous effort. Definitely not the easiest horse. Took all the chances to the last fence and coming in to win and win it properly in 39.95. Tremendous success for Peter DeVos and definitely a great win after his slightly disappointing performance in uh, Gothenburg when things went a little bit wrong with, with a part. But, uh, Lost no time, great turn, great turn back to the Oxford there and then just kept going and didn't pull back one bit, just trusted the mare to jump it and jump she did. And coming in 39.95 at the end of a hugely competitive class. Well done, Peter De Vos. Tremendous victory. Well, this is uh, as exciting a, a Grand Prix as one has seen for, for a little while with a, with a very good winner. And at the same time, we also saw some new combination performing at the very top. And, and of course, we can't forget uh, the tremendous performance of uh, Mathilde Carlson and Chopin, which, uh, which really shouldn't be overshadowed by all the other rounds we saw afterwards. So, a win for Belgium with Peter Bavos and Claire Zed from Mexico till the next show, probably Madrid Global Champions Tour. From me, Alan Storm, see you then. <laughs>